Ladies and gentlemen, we are sorry for the disruption. Leonardo da Vinci said, out of all the sciences, art is the queen of communication. And now, more than ever... And climate activists from the Just Stop Oil Group are sending their own message through the art world. Earlier today, they targeted a 16th century copy of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, thought to have been painted by one of his students. They made uh, their presence known at London's Royal Academy. And this comes one day after they glued themselves to a masterpiece in the nearby National Gallery. We've got James Skeet, uh, the spokesperson for Just Stop Oil, joining us now. He is in Manchester, England. Uh, James, thank you so very much for joining us. Look, your protests have created a lot of global headlines, and some of those headlines are talking about just what kind of damage has been done to the artwork. Do you think that people are more concerned about that as opposed to the actual message you're trying to send? Hi, Eleni. Lovely to speak to you. Well, uh, first up, the Just Up Oil Coalition is demanding that there be no new investment in fossil fuel projects. Uh, and this is entirely in line with what the International Energy Agency are telling us, what the United Nations are telling us. And in fact, the entire scientific consensus is telling us that there can be no new investment in fossil fuel projects if we want to ensure a livable future. And what we're seeing is a result of, the, of, of people terrified that, frankly, that their government is not taking any meaningful action on the climate crisis. OK, but do, who are you actually speaking to through, um, you know, this protest action? Are you talking to the organisations? Are you talking to the policymakers? Are you trying to get people aware? Because it has been said that your actions are not really going to shift or move the needle when it comes to the oil companies watching this and saying, well, you know, maybe we should not invest further in, in oil projects. Well, I think that's a little historically illiterate. Time and again, history has shown that civil resistance is the most effective means of bringing about the kind of societal shift that we need to see in the sort of time frame that we have left. The fact of the matter is, is that we're out of time on this issue. Three weeks ago, 125 million Americans were under high heat warning. 122, uh, the, it was so hot in, in March in India, it's the hottest March in record in 122 years. Birds were literally dropping out of the sky. We are seeing crops fail worldwide. And when crops fail, people so James, starve and civilizations collapse. Yeah. So, James, we've been covering so much of these stories. You know, we, we're covering so much of, of the climate catastrophes that are happening in, in the, around the world. But my question is still this. So I know you're saying civil disobedience sends a message. But do you think that corporates right now are watching you saying, you know what, we, we've got to move, we've got to change our... Our, our status. We've got to change the way we think because of the, you know, the, the statements you're making in art galleries and the statements you're making at the Grand Prix. The fact is, is that we're not going to get the required change from within the current economic and political paradigm. I am calling on every able American. If you care about your community, you need, it is your moral and civic duty to step into civil resistance at this time. Every future generation is dependent on what we do right now. Step into civil resistance and defend your children's future from this corporate tyranny. Yeah. And I get your, your sense of urgency, and I know we're in code red, um, and the climate agenda is, is absolutely a vital one. Um, I was looking at sort of your past, um, you know, even just this year, what you've been doing, you were blocking um, an oil rig at one point. You were saying that you're willing to all get arrested until your message hits home. And again, I ask you this, you know, are, are policymakers calling you up and saying, OK, how can we work together? Are, are oil companies calling you up and saying, this is our plan going forward? I, you know, is it, is it changing anything by you getting arrested at this point? Well, the fact of the matter is, is I'm on your program talking to 250 million people. Um, with regards to changing policy, well, I think that really highlights the criminality of at least the UK government, and I would say governments worldwide. Um, at the current time, at least in the UK, they are funneling £236 million pounds a week of taxpayers' money, money subsidising the most profitable industry on earth. This is when the chief executive of BP says he's got more money than he knows what to do with. BP made £9.5 in profit last year. Shell made £14 billion last year. The, the pil current political class exists as a mechanism to transfer wealth from those that don't have it to those that do. And that's why people are suffering with the cost of living crisis at the moment with our over-dependence on fossil fuels. Yeah, and I, and I get that because there's also this argument, right, that um, industrialization is important so that 
you know, we don't increase the, the um, inequality gap. There's a fear that if you remove oil out of the market, what that would mean, it would mean a total collapse of systems as we know it. Are you and your team understanding that there needs to be a transition? Um, and do you believe when policymakers are talking about a transition, you know, through gas or LNG, and that is the way forward? Because there has been a commitment. You know, during COP, there was a commitment. You've got countries saying they want to bring down carbon emissions. Is that not something you believe in at this point? I think everything that said at COP was was demonstrably false. Um, the fact of the matter is, it's our dependence on fossil fuels that leaves us vulnerable to the fluctuations on the international energy market. If we want to ensure energy security, we should be transitioning to renewables as fast as possible. They're faster, cheaper. We have every technological capability to make this happen today. Anyone telling you anything different is lying to you. James, thank you very much. Um... Climate is something we're very passionate about. I certainly am. Good to speak to you, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lenny. Cheers.